Good evening. It is with great, great humility that I stand before you tonight, proudly representing the city of Los Angeles and East LA and the State Assembly for the great state of California. It is my deepest privilege to accept this honor and be recognized as the sixth annual or sixth recipient of the Gabby Giffords Rising Star Award. When you think of the words courage and resilience, there is no one that exemplifies that the most than Congresswoman Giffords. And it is courage and resilience that brought my fellow nominees into public service. Thank you, Jennifer Carroll Foy, Foy, Margaret Good, Sandra Jauregui, Arvina Martin, and New Line New for all you do for your communities. <laughs> to my colleagues in the California legislature, thank you for your trust and partnership. And to my team, thank you for your belief in me and the work that we are destined to do together. Like it was said in the bicameral committee of my state legislature before I began my term, or just as I began my term, California may not have been a part of the inception of this nation, but let me tell you, it will certainly lead its future. I was born in El Salvador. I wanna tell you about my journey. I came to the United States when I was five years old fleeing a civil war. My grandmother, my aunt, and I made the journey to Boyle Heights on the east side of Los Angeles. My mother had arrived a few years earlier, saved money, and sent for us. We were a family struggling to be reunited. Between the ages of five and 13, I was undocumented and I did not know. I was fortunate to have received residency and citizenship and took an oath in my early 20s to become a citizen of this nation. I am a first generation American, the first in my family to graduate from a US, US uh, high school, the first to go to college, the first in my family of seven to be able to vote. <laughs> Exercise that power. John Adams wrote a love letter to his wife Abigail, in 1780 that speaks to me today. In his vision of our young nation and the generations that would follow, he wrote, I must study politics and war so that my sons may have the liberty to study mathematics and philosophy in order to give their children a right to study painting, poetry, and music. My story is not unique. It is the story of the promise of America. Courage and resilience are words that remind me of my parents. Two hardworking, working class immigrant parents from El Salvador and Mexico, who made sure that my four younger sisters and I had a roof over our heads and food on the table. My father, the son of a bracero worker, is a street sweeper in the Chinatown community of my district and has tremendous pr uh, pride in the work that he does. My mother, the daughter of a nurse, is a home care worker and a dues paying member of SEIU 2015. <laughs> she cares for an elderly woman in her 90s who's become family. My parents taught me the value of compassion, integrity, good work ethic, and the unwavering desire to do as much good as I possibly could and do the things that they were not able to do in their lives. Courage and resilience is what led me to run my first race. During the 2016 presidential election, I was at Standing Rock, North Dakota, participating in the fight for clean water and tribal sovereignty. On a night of violence, I was tear gassed and hit with a flash grenade. I was a journalist covering human rights and US politics, but I knew that I had to do more. So when the opportunity arose to run for a special congressional seat in December of that year, I took it. I knew deep in my bones that when justice calls, you answer. 
I did not win that election. And as fate would have it, I lost my congressional primary two years ago tonight. And what I learned in losing was how to do so with grace and dignity. The assembly member of my district won that race, and he's now fighting the good fight here in Washington. But I decided to hashtag persist. And someone very powerful in Los Angeles told me, Wendy, if you run twice and you lose twice, your political career will be over before it's begun. And maybe it was a way to dissuade me, but it did the exact opposite. Because I had a wonderful career before and I would have a great career after. And I wasn't going to wait for somebody to tap me on the shoulder and tell me that it was my turn. So I ran again, two special elections, back to back in one year, and I won. But if I were five years old today, what would my chances be? Tonight, I stand before you as a member of the California State Assembly who once made a journey much like the many children who are making a similar journey today. The tragedy that is occurring at our borders is immoral. And we must do more to protect women and children and the most vulnerable in our communities. This recognition, <laughs> this recognition that you have bestowed upon me tonight to this formerly undocumented child, to this unrecognized refugee, to this first generation American woman of color, lets me know that you believe what I believe. I believe that these great United States knows that its future is brighter than its past. I believe that the majority of Americans aren't coming from the left or the right, we're coming from the bottom up. And that no matter, and that no matter where you come from, what you look like, what language you speak or what your legal status is. This nation and our American dream belongs to all of us, not just a few. Thank you so much. Thank you.